I met Moore and I talked to him and I actually had his first Intel 4004 chip in 1970, so I know a little bit about some of these guys. Um, basically, the rule is the number of transistors on a chip doubles every, every 24 months as the costs go down. So basically, you get twice as much power, twice as much processing power for half as much money every two years. It's, a, it's been pretty constant all the way through there, and it's important that this SDR world is the first part of ham radio that's truly benefiting from Moore's law. And I'll, I'll go into why it happens. Uh, let's talk about hardware-defined radios. And HDR, and let's call them HDRs, let's not call them SDRs, and each hardware-defined radio is a narrow-band radio. It's about 15 megahertz, or 15 kilohertz wide. It has all kinds of distortion going in there. They, they've thrown in a DSP chip about 1980. And uh, that was a big, big thing. That's how they call it an SDR, because that's done in software, mostly. It's not. Uh, but the problem with these things is you see there's some distortion coming in the first conversion. There's distortion coming in the second version. And there's more distortion coming in the third version. So what they do in a hardware-defined radio is they create some distortion, put roofing filters in. And the uh, purpose of roofing filters is to get rid of the noise and distortion they create. They go through a second fil uh, conversion, create more noise and distortion, and then put in another filter to get rid of the noise and distortion. And then they go through a third filter, and then they put it through a DSP. So they're basically fighting against their own technology. And there's some great examples of these things. Uh, Hil uh, the German one, Hilberling, is just a marvelous piece of engineering. It proves if you spend enough money and continue to spend enough money, you can get a radio that's almost as good as a thousand dollar SDR. You know, they're great radios, and they've proven as far as they can go. But the next thing is what? 25,000 euros, 35,000 euros to do something that you'll be able to do for 500, 500 euros next year. You know, it's, it's, it's a losing battle for them, and it's because of Moore's Law. Really simply, this is where the hybrid defined radio works. It's basically narrow band through all kinds of filters and nonsense that they have up there. They put it in a DSP, this is about 1980, and that's a hardware defined. The software defined radio, we try and get the, soft, the conversion or the demodulation as close to the antenna as possible. The closer the antenna, the less distortion we introduce, the less noise we introduce, the less worse we make things. So we don't have to clean up the nonsense that we created. It's, 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 it's actually quite amazing how much nonsense we create to clean up. Um, I've seen this, and I've seen the advertising, I've been there. You go to the LCRAP booth and you talk to them about K3S, and they say, oh, it's an SDR. No, it isn't. Or you go to the ICOM booth, and they'll tell you, that's an SDR. I've had long discussions with engineers. It's not. These are hardware defined radios, they're HDRs. Uh, here's your Generation Zero SDR, 1903. Mr. Marconi, and that's a coherer. I actually took that picture, the one that was actually working. It is a wide band direct sampling radio.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 